I'm going to record. And we are now recording. So today's presentation is Doodle Bookable Calendar or connecting with students using um, Doodle Bookable Calendar. My name is Lauren Woodman and I'm an instructional designer with online learning. For those of you who have not attended any of my presentations in the past, I'm very laid back and open. So feel free to type any questions in the chat and I'll answer them as we go or I'll let you know if it's something that I need to address at the end. I just ask that you mute yourself if you're not speaking, but feel free to unmute and interrupt and ask a question at any time if you would like some more clarification or if you have something that you'd like to add. We are offering a certificate or a badge for completing this training. So stay tuned to the very end of the training and you'll get a QR code and a link to claim your badge. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? No? All right. And if you see me kind of looking back and forth, I do have two screens going. So I'm checking on chat and looking at everyone over here and looking at the presentation on this screen. Okay, so what we're going to go over today is what is Doodle, book, Doodle Bookable Calendar? Why do I need a calendar scheduler? How do I set up a bookable calendar? We'll do a demo and a walkthrough. Uh, we'll show both a video and I'll show you kind of going through it myself. Um, how you would share that calendar and kind of best practices for how you get that information out there. And then we'll briefly talk about some other tools and resources in the calendar scheduling realm. And just so you know, you will get a copy of this presentation at the end as well. I always send out copies of this. So not just recorded, but you'll have the PowerPoint that has my speaker notes and it has all of these links within also. So first, what is Doodle Bookable Calendar? So it's, if you've heard of Doodle, you know that's a meeting scheduling tool. It's really convenient to schedule times with a lot of different people. The Bookable Calendar is a scheduling tool that allows people to book a time with you when you are free. So that's based on different parameters that you set up. So you can set available meeting days and times, how long you want those meetings to be for the duration, you can set buffers to avoid back-to-back -back meetings. So you could say that you want 10 minutes between meetings instead of having things back-to-back -to, -back to give yourself some time to recover or in case meetings run over. Um, you can also set buffers um, for scheduling meetings. So prevent students from scheduling last minute meetings. You might say meetings have to be booked two or three or even a day in advance. Um, that gives you time to prepare if you, know, you have a busy schedule and that way you're available to check your calendar. You can also ask invitees to complete questions before scheduling. So you might ask your students to answer questions so you know why they want to meet. And if any of you have scheduled time with me, you know that I use Doodle Bookable Calendar. And I also ask questions because some faculty want to talk about training, some faculty want to talk about course development. And that way I have my right hat on when I get to the meeting. So I do ask, what is it you want to discuss? And the questions can be mandatory or not mandatory. Um, if you set up Doodle Bookable Calendar to connect to your calendar, your Outlook calendar, it will automatically sync meetings to your calendar and to your invitees calendar. And it will avoid overbooking um, unavailable times. So let's say you say you're available nine to five, but you have a, an orientation meeting from one to four. Well, that time won't show up as available if you've linked your calendar. So you might be thinking, well, why do I need this, right? I have office hours and I'm on campus nine to five. Why does anybody need one of these? Well, the first is efficiency. Even when we're trying to set up one-on-one -on -one meetings with people, you ever do that back and forth? over email, like, oh, I could do between 20, 10 and 12. I could do 11 to two. Well, what about this time? What about that time? This avoids that back and forth. Here's a link, schedule a time that works for you. As I mentioned, you can integrate your calendar so that appointments auto update and you don't have to manually add in a calendar um, event every time you have a meeting with somebody. This way, if somebody filled out the link, it's on your calendar. You don't have to do anything. Um, the second thing is just ease of use. So students in particular might not feel comfortable reaching out to ask for help every time they need it. But if you've posted a link 
that says, hey, anytime you need help, you know, just schedule a time, no questions asked, then, you know, that, that makes it a little easier for them. They don't have to ask, they know it's a given and they can go away and they can go through that and schedule without that fear factor. Um, it's also really helpful for administrators as well. As I say, you know, we're very busy. So having the ability to just schedule a time um, allows people to schedule with you without, you know, having to do that back and forth. Timing is everything. So faculty will often tell me that students don't come to office hours and using a calendar scheduler, both, you know, it's helpful for them because they can pick a time that works for them, but it also prevents you from wasting your time, right? If you're sitting in office hours on Tuesdays from four to six and nobody ever comes, that's time where you could be doing something else. If you say, I have this link and it's open when it's open, and you know, that way you have your available time, um, you know, your time is really valuable. And if nobody schedules, it's free time. If somebody schedules, then you know, you know that that's the time that works for them, that also works for you. Um, yeah, and also just the ability to schedule as many or as few times that work for you. So you'll see when we set up the calendar, my calendar, for example, because I use it to meet with faculty, is pretty much open all of my working hours. Um, if you are meeting with students, you might say, I only want my calendar open on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I'm not gonna limit it to that two hour office hour block. I am going to open up some more time. You can also change that at any time. So if your schedule changes from semester to semester or even week to week, you can adjust that calendar um, to be as open or as closed as you want it to be. So like I said, we're gonna watch a video and we are going to do a demo, but these are the basic steps of how you get started setting up your bookable calendar. So I really recommend, first, if you're not using your Outlook calendar, I really recommend that you do use your Outlook calendar for NCC. Uh, it's very convenient and it's what anybody, any administrators will use to schedule with you. So it's, it's really helpful, especially for this purpose. And if you are using your Outlook calendar, then the first step is to connect your calendar. Um, so once you connect your calendar, you'll be able to see um, your busy times and the doodle poll options will automatically um, sync up to your calendar. So like I said, if you have meetings during a time you're supposed to be available for a doodle, it will know not to allow anyone to schedule during those times. So you don't have to link your calendar, but it makes it so much easier because then you don't have to worry about being overbooked. Doodle knows to just disregard any times that you're busy on your calendar. Um, as far as the time, the default times, I think are nine to 12 or one to five, but you can adjust any time of day, like I said, as, as long or as short as you want it to be and a different time for every day. And I'll show you this as we go through. Um, and then you simply send out the link to your students or to anyone you want. So you can put that link in Blackboard, you can put it in your email, you can send it, um, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, and we'll talk about that at the end, kind of what the best practices are. So now I have a short video that I'm going to show. And please let me know if you can't hear it. And this is kind of a visual of how you would set up the calendar. Hi everyone, it's Aaron from Doodle again. Don't you wish your customers, prospects, or teammates could just book into your calendar but only when you want them to? Well, we've got you covered with our easy appointment scheduling solution, Bookable Calendar. You set the time rules or buffers and your clients can choose a time that works for them. Let's see how it works. From the dashboard, you can find Bookable Calendar on the left side of the page. Select Create Calendar to get started. Give your calendar a title, Change the URL if you like, and then set the meeting rules. You can change the duration of every meeting, update your work hours. Here I've changed them from eight to five. Add a one week future horizon. I prefer to chat with potential customers sooner than later, of course. You can also add a minimum notice or buffers to prevent back-to-back -back meetings. Then save your settings and share the links as you like in an email signature or add them to your website, for example. 
Your guests will open the link and see a calendar where they can choose a time. The spaces show the times you already have booked in your calendar. They would choose a time, add their email address and confirm. The event is added to your calendar and the guest receives a calendar invite so they can add it to their own. Everyone has different preferences for different types of meetings. Fortunately, Doodle Premium users can create up to 100 bookable calendars covering every meeting need. Bookable calendar is perfect for sales teams, recruiters, consultants, and more. Efficient scheduling makes for happier clients, successful meetings, and ultimately, more revenue. We've covered a lot of ground in this introduction video series, account setup, calendar connection, and how to schedule our three meeting types. Thanks for watching. Visit our resources page for more information on Doodle features, and please reach out to us if you have any questions. We're here to help. Okay, so that talks about um, Doodle bookable calendar, and um, you saw that, that walk through there, and it really is as simple as it looked. So before we go through the demo, oh, I do want to also say, he mentioned premium and creating a lot of different calendars. So I'm just talking about the free version today where you can have one calendar. So you might want multiple, let's say maybe you teach at multiple schools or maybe you want one that's for students and one that's for administrators. Those might have different time availabilities. With the free version, you can just have the one calendar, um, but I think it can work with just one calendar. Um, everybody gets the same link, everybody schedules the same amount of time. Um, any questions before I move through to the walkthrough? No? Okay. So I'm going to just kind of switch screens here. So can everybody see the, um, you should be seeing a web page now with Doodle up. Okay. So um, I have already signed up for Doodle, but if you go to sign up, I'm going to recommend that you register, but you continue with Microsoft. So that will link to your Northampton um, 365 office account. And then you'll just log in with your Northampton credentials. So that is my recommendation. Um, and it will help you with linking your calendar as well because it'll already all be set up. If for some reason, maybe you work somewhere else and they use Google or you wanna use Google, you can use Google or Facebook or just your email address and password to sign up to. Um, because I'm already signed up, I'm going to log in. And for this purpose, I am creating a brand new Doodle. Normally I log in with Microsoft using my credentials, um, but I've created another account. Here's a plug. If you're interested in instructional design or course design, you can email instructional design at northampton.edu. Uh, that goes to myself and Sarah and Marshall. So I just log in and now you see this is brand new. I have nothing here. I've never used this account. So this is what, if you've never used Doodle, this is where you will be. Um, so I'm just waiting for this page to load. Okay, so I get to the dashboard. This is your Doodle dashboard. This is where um, we're not going to cover this, but you know, a regular what we call Doodle poll is if you wanted to send out a Doodle for to find a meeting time with a lot of people, this is where you would do that. Um, but I want to create a bookable calendar, and you see it's big blue button here. Create your first bookable calendar. I click on that. And it tells me, hey, you don't have a calendar connected and I can choose to do it later, but it's telling me here, it's really a good idea if you connect your calendar, you're gonna have a better experience. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now it's probably going to, it might yell at me because I'm going to connect a calendar that's connected to another account, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, my account has been connected. All right, so now I see I have my calendar connected. Now I can go ahead and create my bookable calendar.
So by default, the calendar title is my bookable calendar. Maybe I want to rename this. Um, I'm going to call it instructional design calendar. You might call it office hours calendar. You could name it your, your name calendar. It doesn't really matter. It's just for you. The default URL is doodle.com slash, and this part here is going to be, here it says instructional design. That's usually going to be that first part of your email address, which is another reason why you want to sign up with your Northampton and not, you know, sweetlips97 at yahoo.com because that is going to be in the URL. Um, then the end of the link, you can change. So right now it's set to slash book a time. I could say meet with me. Um, you can really change that to anything that you want. Uh, we'll come back to this copying a link and link sharing option later. Um, but here you see add more details. If you click that drop down, um, this is actually kind of a, a hack a little bit. But under description, you can say um, use this link to schedule office hours. Um, that will go into the calendar description. Um, but then location, um, if you are doing online office hours, you would want to put in that URL. So if you're doing office hours in Zoom, you can paste in that Zoom link. And I'm gonna see if I can do the info. So Christy, I see that you said yes, but I'm not sure what you said yes to. So if you have a question, you um, can interrupt me at any time. Um, so here is you want to put in that Zoom URL. Um, I'm just going to put in a fake one here. But you can copy and paste in your personal meeting room or if you're using Collaborate, you can paste that in there. This is automatically going to hyperlink. So when you go to Outlook in the location field, that Zoom link will be there so they can click on it. So it's important to add that under location. If you scroll down, you see these are your available days. And by default, it sets up 9 to 12, Monday to Friday with a break for lunch. If you want to change those times at all, you can both move that green box up and down. So you can move it down. Now it's 10 to 1. You can um, contract them, I guess. So you could say 10 to 11. Um, you can you know, make them longer. You can delete them altogether. Just click on it and click delete. So maybe you don't want to meet on Mondays at all. You can delete that. You can also add more. So maybe you want to be available one to two on Tuesdays, but then also from four to five. So it's very simple. You just click where you want a time, click to delete. You can add and drag times to make yourself more available. Um, so here, like I said, you can pick any day, any time, as many times as you want. Because this is connected to your calendar, let's say you want to be available at all times, then you would select. Um, you, know, you might select every day from nine to five, and then whatever is on your calendar will make times unavailable. So let's say you have a meeting from 10 to 11, another one from two to three. Students aren't going to see those times as available because they're already booked on your calendar. So you can choose whether you want to be very restrictive with your times or just kind of leave it open and any free time that you have you know, students or whoever you send this link to can just pop in any free time in your calendar. Um, because I have a calendar connected, it's going to check for conflicts and make sure I don't over double book myself. Here's where I set the meeting duration. So this is going to be the same for every meeting booked. So this might be why you'd want to have multiple bookable calendars, but again, with the free version, we're just doing one. So you can set meeting durations anywhere from 15 minutes to four hours. Uh, I can't imagine that you would need anything longer than four hours. <laughs> um, but you know, I do 30 minutes. I find that's usually long enough. You can always edit these in your Outlook calendar. So let's say a student books, or let's say you have it set for 30 minutes and a you know, student books a 30 minute appointment. You can always change that and make it an hour and send them an email and say, hey, I lengthened our meeting because I think we need more time. Um, so you'll go with the time that you think is the most common. 
30 minutes, maybe 15 minutes for office hours. It really depends on what your needs are. So future horizon, that means how far out can someone book? Now you might say, uh, you know, for the whole semester, three months, or you might say, you know, I have a big writing assignment this week. I only want students to be able to book a week out because their due date is coming up next week. And I don't want them to book after that. Minimum notice. So this is how soon can students book with, you know, a, a time with you without you knowing. So right by default, it's set for two days. So they have to book two days in advance. Um, I usually do an hour to four hours so that they can book same day, but it's not going to be a last minute thing. Um, four hours allows you time to, you know, have an idea of what's on your calendar. If you have a day where that's particularly busy, you could always block out your calendar so students can't book a time last minute. And again, you can always come in and change these at any time. So maybe for a while, four hours is enough time, um, but maybe your schedule is really uncertain for a few weeks or maybe your personal things going on you can always come in here and change it to you know a week out um and i'm getting warnings there because my future horizon and my minimum notice are the same buffer time so that is a time between meetings so if you're like me i do not like having a ton of back-to-back -back meetings you don't have time to go to the bathroom you don't have time to get a drink so this allows you um, the ability to set time between meetings now, what this means, especially if you do 30 minute meetings, is that your meeting times are not necessarily gonna be on the hour or the half hour because it'll put maybe 10 minutes between a meeting. So you might have a meeting from two to 2.30 and then your next meeting would be from 2.40 to 1.10. Uh, but that does give you time in between the meetings, however much time you want to transition. And it's also good if your meetings tend to run over, that way you don't have you know, people overlapping. And I know I did mention location as far as doing online office hours, and I think this is a great tool for that, but you can use this for in-person meetings too. You could just put that location as your, your physical office hour and you know have students show up in person to meet with you. Um, your work hours, this isn't terribly important because you're setting your availability up here, but this would lengthen um, this amount of time. So right now you see it only goes until 6 p.m. because my work hours are set from 9 to 6. But let's say you want to have evening office hours, you might set your time until 10. And now I can book later. So you can have later times available. And then custom questions. So this is where students would have to answer questions before they um, before they can schedule a meeting with you. So you type in the question, um, you know, did you have uh, problems with the assignment? Um, I, my custom question is, what do you want to meet about? I make it mandatory. Um, you save that. So you can add as many questions as you want. You can make them mandatory or not mandatory. And that way you have a little bit of information. You're not going into the meeting blind. Um, I'm all done with this, and actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> all meeting times will be booked in. Um, this should default to your time zone, but if not, you want to make sure to click on that time, and you should be able to change it. Now, I am in an incognito browser, so uh, Google or so Doodle doesn't know where I am right now. So that's why I'm not able to change this time because I'm in that incognito browser. But you should be able to click on that. Um, and change it to, there we go, to Eastern Standard Time. Uh, let's do New York. So now all meeting times will be booked in this New York time zone. So I'm done. I click on done. And now I have, I see my, under my bookable calendars, I have my bookable calendar here and I can copy a link and I click on that and it should automatically copy to my clipboard. And now I can put that link anywhere. So if I send out that link, so this is and it's telling me that it's in preview mode. Um, 
these are my available times. So if I send this link out to students, this is what they see to book time with me. So I have something available today at 4 p.m. And it looks like I have the next couple of mornings open, but nothing in the afternoon. And this is linked to my Outlook calendar. And I know that this is correct because I know I have things going on tomorrow afternoon and Thursday afternoon. <laughs> so this is my availability. If I blocked out time on my calendar, let's say I block out, I have a meeting from nine to 10, that will automatically refresh and these 9 a.m. and 9.40 times would, would not be available. So that's how that links up. And I'm gonna go back to the presentation now um, and just wrap up with a couple more things. Does it allow for appointments after five? Um, yes, Christy, it does. As I showed, you can do um, really any times that you want. If your Zoom room is password protected, should we put the password info into the location or the notes section? So that's a good question, Sarah. Um, when you copy, if you copy your Zoom room, there is a way to copy the link that has the password embedded. And that is the link I would put in the location because if students click on that, it should have the password embedded and take them right there. Um, but if you have a special password on it, you might also wanna put that in that description box. So just in case they click on it and it doesn't take them in, they also have the password available to them in the description. Good question. Hi everyone, All right. it's Aaron from Doodle again. So we did our walkthrough. So then sharing that link, so as I showed you, you get a link to copy. And once they, once participants book a slot, you both get an email and you both get a calendar event on your calendar. So um, students are now on Outlook, so it should be on their Outlook calendar. Whether or not they're using their Outlook calendar is a whole other question, but you can tell them it should be right on your calendar. Um, you can put that link in your email signature. You can, of course, always just send it out to people and say, oh, you want to book a time? Here's the link if they ask what your availability is. Um, but if you are teaching, I really recommend putting it in your syllabus, putting it in the your instructor area, and putting it in um, either announcements or learning content. So especially if you know you have an exam coming up or a project coming up where students usually have a lot of questions, anticipate that. So in that, Maybe it's you know week five uh, learning content folder. You know here are the instructions for your project. Here's the link to meet with me if you have further questions. Um, so I provide it you know early and often because students might have a lot of questions um, at different times. But I make it as available as possible, and I recommend you know using it. It's the same link all semester long. You can turn it on and off uh, very easily. So. Oops. Um, so right from here, um, it's pretty easy to just disable the link. So maybe you only want to do it for big projects. You can disable the link, but then you can come back and enable the link at any time so students can, can schedule. But I recommend um, using it throughout the semester so students get used to this is the way I meet with my instructor. So just for reference, um, there are a few links to, um, you know, the video I showed, some articles from Doodle that kind of walk you through this if you're trying to set it up on your own. It is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there are a few other calendar scheduling tools that I know people use, and uh, I've put mention of them here, but I haven't linked them. One is Calendly. It's a similar tool. Um, you can check that out if you're interested in, in maybe having another calendar scheduler for a different purpose. Um, the other is Microsoft Bookings. And it is, um, I believe I have access to it. I know I have access to a few more things than some of the faculty do. Um, if you look under your apps in office.com, you might see it there. It should tie in more seamlessly with your Outlook calendar, but I personally have never used it. So I can't vouch for how easy it is or how well it works, but it's a similar thing. I see Katie asks, what's the best route for this tool to use if you teach at several schools? Great question, Katie. So um, if you're teaching at several schools, if your big concern is, is really that calendar piece, right? So you can use the same link anywhere. You could send the link to Timbuktu and people could schedule with you, but if you're managing a couple of different calendars, 
um, that can get really tricky. What I would recommend in that case is probably doing, um, probably having two different Doodle accounts. So you probably have the two different links and having separate days, right? So maybe Monday, Wednesday is my NCC day, Tuesday, Thursday is my LTRC day or whatever. Um, and that way you can kind of keep them separate. You don't have to worry about overbooking. Um, I'm not sure if with the free version, you can um, link multiple calendars uh, because that is an option. Let's see. Um, that can be an option as well if you could link both calendars to the same account here. Um, and these are all calendars that I have under my Outlook calendar, but I'm not sure if it would let me add a, an outside calendar to that. Um, if you wanna book a meeting with me separately, we can definitely play around with it, those settings and see if that would be a possibility. It might be a matter of linking your, that calendar to your Outlook calendar and then you know they all feed from one. So Sarah says, yeah, I linked my Microsoft and my Google calendar just now. So um, it looks like that is an option. Thanks Sarah for sharing that. All right, so this is a moment I know you've all been waiting for. <laughs> I'm gonna paste two links into the chat. Um, the first link is a link to claim your badge for this training. The second longer link is a link to this presentation. You can also, um, to claim your badge, you can also just scan the QR code with your phone. If you wanna hold your phone up and scan the QR code, it should automatically take you to where you can claim the badge. I recommend using your NCC, um, your NCC information um, to sign in because we are offering badges for most of our trainings at this point. So you'll have a nice little collection of them in your account. Uh, Joe, I see your message. I will address that in a second. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Questions, comments, concerns? How do I get the closed captioning at the bottom of my Zoom? So actually, um, this is closed captioning at the bottom of my Microsoft account. Yeah. So this is in PowerPoint and um, there is an option within PowerPoint to do subtitles. So this is subtitles in PowerPoint since I'm presenting in PowerPoint, they show up at the bottom. There is an option in Zoom uh, called live transcript that you can turn on also that will give you closed captions at the bottom of your Zoom meeting. Um, both of these are AI generated, so they're not um, always perfect or 100%, but they're pretty good. So Joe wants me to mention, and it is a good point to mention, um, that sometimes the, the connection from your calendar and Doodle will, I don't want to say break, but there's a, it gets a little wonky. And I've noticed with Outlook that often happens when they update something. So if you're using, whether it's Google or Outlook, if you notice that there is an update, um, you might want to delete your calendar and relink it. And it takes a second. It's a matter of coming here, going to manage and removing, disconnecting this calendar and reconnecting it. It takes a second. Um, and I would just, you know, go in maybe once every couple of weeks and just make sure that what you're seeing in the preview is actually reflecting your times that you're not available. Um, what will happen if the connection breaks is that it just shows all of your time is available because it's not seeing that you're busy on your calendar. Um, so that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Just make sure that that connection is up to date. Also, if you change your password at any time, you wanna make sure to come back and disconnect and reconnect. Um, just to make sure that that link is still working. All right, so that is the end of my presentation, uh, but I am happy to stay on, answer any questions that anyone might have. I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs>